If I could have it my way, I would have every teenager homeschool in those years. I really would. Now, high school for me is my favorite time to homeschool because your children can really get a jump start into their future, into those things that they love. Hey and hello, welcome. My name is Jana and today we are talking about homeschooling and high school. I know, yeah, are you freaked out? <laughs> Don't be freaked out. Today we're gonna go over how you step-by-step -step plan for your high school years for your kids. I am a homeschool mom of 23 years. I have six kids that I have graduated. I've got two more to go. I have a total of eight kids. And I've been doing this a while. Now I have not done it perfectly, I have to tell you that, but I have been getting better and better. In fact, I think I've got it quite down of what you need to do, what you need to plan for, and that's what we're gonna talk about, all right? Just hold on because there's a lot of great information and I'm really going to just give you it all. This is how I would do it. These are the things I need you to be aware of. So let's do this. Let's get into how to plan for the four years of high school. Of course, before we start, I gotta say one thing. High school years are so important. That is why we have to do a little bit of planning. We just finished our remodel. And you know what, plans are very important. You know, having a plan of what is going to happen and just kind of outlining everything, very important, because you just don't wanna go at it willy-nilly with these kind of important things. Planning in the high school years is so important for these reasons. If you plan better, it takes so much more stress off of you, mom. It does, and then you feel a little bit more like, okay, this is gonna work. Homeschooling in those elementary years and even a little bit into middle school, you don't have like this end of the race coming at you like you do in high school. You've got four years and then you're done. And so you gotta make sure to get everything in. That is why you've got to plan. You can choose your teen's courses and their plan of action for these four years instead of kind of being stuffed into that one size fits all and that's in the public schools. For the four years, you can like plan out everything that they're going to do. You can go and work towards college credit during these years, which your child could get a jump start on college if that's what they want to do and it also helps you decide do i do these certain subjects you know at home do i outsource it to someone do i find an online class so when you plan ahead of the game you can make all those decisions and be aware of them and be on top of them the first thing i want to go over and i want you to think about and talk to your kids about this um, is the goals and plans that your high schooler has after high school. So what are those goals? What are the things that they wanna do after high school is over? Um, they need to kind of list those out. Do they wanna go to college? Do they wanna just work? Do they want to go into the military? Do they want to do a trade? I don't know, what, what is it? Figure that out very, very first because that's gonna be very important to have at the very top. That is going to help when you are going through the different curriculum and all those things that you have to think about when you're planning for these four years. Now, if they don't know what they want, that's okay. Just putting that seed in their little brains can be like, hmm, maybe I should think about that more. So if they don't know, it's okay. Maybe you can leave that blank and maybe talk about it in another year, but it's something that you need to have at the forefront of planning for the high school years. The second thing that we go over is the state laws where you live. For example, in my state, in Idaho, I have to do something comparable to what the high schools are teaching. Now, it's not necessary for you to comply with those you know, things that they have the students do for high school diplomas because you really aren't part of the school. But it is helpful to look at what they have their high school students do so that you can make sure that your kids are getting the same you know, education that they are getting with you know, a little bit changes here and there. That's very important to know your state laws. Now, where do you find them? hslda.org. I love that website. This basically is the homeschool legal defense 
where they help homeschoolers with anything legal. They have everything on their website that you need to know about homeschooling and all the legalities of it and um, where you live. You can also go to your State Department of Education website and they also probably will have things about high school and their requirements for graduation. So check those out also. Now the third thing that you need to think about are your teen's interests. These are the things that are important to your children, the things that they love, the things that they're really good at, that they want to incorporate into their school. Um, these are different than the goals and plans for after high school. These are the things they want to dive deep into when they do their school. So talk to your kids about these, write them down on a list, and get ready to incorporate these into the next stages of our planning. Now the next thing you want to do, you found those requirements right by your state when you start planning for your kids four years, the um, different kind of subjects that they are doing, the English, math, science, history, and foreign language, and then um, the electives. So you've got the core subjects that they really need to get into college or just to have general, you know, basic knowledge. And then you have those electives that really broaden out their education. Let me show you how I transfer that to my schedules. Before we start, I wanted to show you two documents that I have created, which would be very simple for you to create, and there, it's not a really big deal. So I just made this um, thing for a high school four year at a glance. I like to see everything in one big picture. And so I just put my grades above here, you know, according to semester, first semester, second semester, and then I put my uh, the different subjects here, those core subjects, and then my electives. And then I also have the core credits and the elective credits so that I can keep track of um, the total of credits for these four years. Um, it's very helpful to me, especially when I plan, and I'm going to re reference this as we go along in the next part of my video. All right, I also want to show you this document that I've made and it just takes every grade and I put the first semester, I put all the core subjects and electives on this side and the second semester and the same over here and I've done that with every single grade and as you will see as we move forward with planning in the next part of this video that we are going to be filling this in. It's so helpful because you can have everything in one place, it's all organized and again this is not going to be permanent, it's just a outline. Just imagine this form as a temporary placeholder for these subjects and everything and it's kind of like they're written in pencil because every year you are going to review each grade and see what you need to change and tweak but you have a basic outline to begin with. Okay so here we are at my high school graduation minimum requirements for Idaho. And here they are, they kind of go over their core subject, subject areas, their electives. So they need to have a minimum of 29 credits for their graduation uh, for the core subjects. They need to have 17 credits for their electives, okay? Now I go through here and I look at what they want me to do. The things, the math, you know, the things for language arts, the things for mathematics, the things for science, for social studies, humanities, health. There is one for health, so I gotta make sure I get in some type of health thing. <laughs> As I look at this, I need to have eight credits of language arts. And so what that means basically is this. Let's go back to my high school plan. English, so I need four credits. Now, Hi Idaho does a little bit different. They basically do one semester is one credit and another semester is another credit. So for a year of English, it's two credits, okay? So that's the difference as you see on here. So I have to kind of follow that. So I have English for first semester for my ninth grade and then for the second semester I do another thing of English and so that will give me two credits. So every year my kids need to have some type of English class, all right? And then they need to have a communications. So I'm going to put that in, all right? So here's ninth grade. And then um, I'm probably going to do as an elective, a communication in the t in 10th grade. 
But then English, because I like to do two years of full English. I like to do that just to make sure they've got grammar, they've got uh, the writing skills that they need, okay, that are basic. Okay, um, and then in 10th, 11th grade, basically what I do is I do college. I want them to learn how to do college writing. So I'm just gonna put college writing and I usually like to do that for a whole year. Now, if they are really good at writing and they have really excelled at that and that's one of their you know, talents, that's one of the things that they love, I might do something that's even more intensive. Uh, it just depends, okay? Okay, now my English from my 12th grade year, I'm doing US literature. So they're gonna be reading lots of books, US, and then I like to do British, British literature. So there we go, there's my English. That was pretty simple. So we're gonna do that with every subject. Now, if you do not know what to do with those different you know, subjects, that's okay. Um, you can just kind of put a general thing that you want, uh, like literature, US literature. I'm not sure what that US literature curriculum is going to look like, but that's what I want them to do. Okay, college writing, I'm not sure uh, what kind of college writing I'm gonna have them do, but I'm going to, since I have it planned, as the years go by and I see something or I come across a college writing class or a college writing curriculum, I'm gonna be like, oh my word, that's what I need when they're in the 11th grade. So do you see how helpful the planning stages are? Okay, so let's keep going with now with math. Okay, now with math, um, it also depends on each one of my kids because some of them are math whizzes and a lot of them are not, <laughs> but that's okay. So um, let's just say that they did get pre-algebra done and they got a geometry done. So in mathematics, algebra one, they want to have, they want geometry and they want uh, two credits of a student's choice. So that's just another year of math. So basically that's just three years of math in those four high school years. And I am going to do algebra one. And in 10th grade, I'm actually going to do geometry. The reason I like to do geometry first is because they are going to be getting ready for, whoops, geometry, geometry for the ACT test also. And I wanna make sure we get geometry in there. And then in 11th grade, we are gonna do algebra two. Now, so I've got all of my, I've got all of them, all of the math figured out. Now, what do I do for 12th grade? For math, I don't have anything, do you see that? That can give me a little bit of leeway. Let's say that we start out strong in ninth grade. And then when they get, they just don't get algebra and they're just struggling and struggling. And so the next year in 10th grade, they have to keep going on algebra one. And so it takes them a little extra time. So I like to have a little bit of leeway in the 12th grade, but they do need to get their math going because they are going to be taking these ACT or SAT tests that they have to know this math. 12th grade, I really don't have anything, but it's kind of like this buffer. And if they get it all done and they're math whizzes, I don't have to worry about anything in 12th grade. But if they're not, we have to keep going and I just kind of push everything towards there. Uh, so math is done. I'm gonna leave that blank for the 12th grade. Let's look at the high school graduations for Idaho. So in science, I need to do lab-based, that's two credits, so that's one year of a lab-based science. And then I need to do two more years of student's choice, which basically is four credits. So I basically need to do three years of science and one year has to be lab, okay? So I go back to mine and earth science and astronomy, okay? In 10th grade, I am going to be doing, let's see, um, Physical science with labs, okay, both years. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do physical science. Okay, then in 11th grade, I am going to do, I'm going to do biology with the lab. And I'm going to do life science. But that 
it doesn't have a lab. Now, I, life science, okay. Now, 12th grade uh, for science, I'm going to actually do chemistry with a lab. So I got my two, you know, semesters of lab, uh, chemistry with a lab there too. Okay. Now, I did a little extra there. I got them to do labs four times instead of just two. But that's okay. All right, now let's go. Let's check our Idaho, uh, Idaho stuff here, social studies. So I have to have two history credits, two government credits, and one economics. So basically, that is two and a half years of social studies, which to me is history. I hate when they say social studies. I like history. So for our history, let's go back to ninth grade. Um, I like to do, let's see, that's right, I knew it. I like to do world history and geography with geography. I like my kids to know about the geography of the world. So we are going to do that the first year, that ninth grade year, world history and uh, world geography. Then um, I am supposed to have, it says over here, uh, U.S. history, two credits. So one year of U.S. history and one year of government and half of a semester, one semester of economics. So I am going to put U.S. history here in the 10th grade, okay? And I also do geography. I like them to know the geography of the U United States, okay? So there we go. And then the 11th grade, I am going to do, I think I do government. Let me see if I'm right. U.S. government and then constitutional studies. That's what we do. So in the 11th grade, their junior year, um, we are going to do um, government. Got those in. Now I still have economics, and so economics is going to be their 12th senior year. All right, economics, and I think I do. I do anything else? No. Oh, I do worldviews. I do worldviews. Worldviews is just kind of it's just about different religions and different thoughts, um, stuff like that. I, I think it's very important. So let's go back to now Idaho. We are now into foreign language. So foreign language, they want you to have two to three years for colleges, um, you know, consistent. So like a continuous year and then another continuous year and then even another third continuous year. So that is gonna be ninth grade, 10th grade, and even a possible 11th grade, okay? All right, do you see how this is so easy? This really isn't that bad. Do you see how quick I'm doing this? And you're gonna be done with planning four years. I have humanities. In Idaho, they want me to do humanities. They want me to do one year of humanities. My kids get this in, like, hands down. <laughs> they do theater, they do dance, they do music. So if your kids are taking dance lessons, if your kids are taking music lessons, that all counts for it. So it's really not that big. Now, if your kids are not into dance, and they're not into music, then you probably need to have some type of art class or humanities class at talk. My, my, he, my son takes piano, so I, I, I count that. Um, my daughter took art lessons, so I counted that. Um, one other daughter took singing lessons, voice lessons, I, took, I did that. One daughter did ballet. You know, there's all sorts of things that you can use for the humanities or the fine arts. Uh, let's see. Now, my kids do a class at the high school, and it is a religious class, like a Bible study, and we call it seminary, and it is all four years. So that is one of their electives. I'm going to put that in here. I have to have one semester of help. So that is going to be in, I think I'm going to do that 10th grade right here I'm going to do communications that's one of those you know semester requirements in Idaho and I think I'm going to do health and that health also has to include CPR in Idaho so we are going to put CPR class too, health and CPR so that's what we're going to do for that so basically the 10th grade is all filled up can you see that um, 
I still have a couple. I have one more elective for my ninth grade. I've got one more elective for the eleventh grade, and then I've got two more for um, the twelfth grade. Now, in my senior year, they um, a lot of my kids since they get the things done, if they get them done, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, they can start to work. They can start to have jobs. They can even start when they're 16, you know, when they are sophomores or juniors. Um, our, our family has our own business, and so they start working pretty soon, actually. But especially in the senior year, I would highly recommend that they do those kinds of things, like find a job. Now, also the electives I like to do, let me look at my here, is my kids also do from the, I want to start them in junior year of taking college classes okay so that is where this comes so these are college classes now what these are is if you have a local um, if you have a local community college or you have a local university they sometimes will do dual enrollment or concurrent enrollment where they can actually take online college classes for really cheap. It's awesome. So if you're um, in an area that can do that, I would highly recommend it because they can get their college credits in at a much, much, much cheaper price and they can kind of get ahead, okay? So I'm putting that down for this college classes. I don't know what they're gonna be yet, but that is what we are going to do and that's what we're gonna look forward to. And so that's why planning again is very important because you can actually get ahead, um, start planning, look at the schedules, look at what you wanna do, and it just all seems to work out so much better than as if you know it's August and you're like, oh, I wanted you to do a college class, let's go sign you up, and they're all full. You know, but if you have it planned and you know that this next year, this next school year, you need to plan for those college classes. Um, I have been caught in that way too many times when I didn't plan. So I know that firsthand. Okay, I think we've got everything planned. Okay, now my ninth grade doesn't have an elective. Let me look what I put. My elective for ninth grade, oh, it's piano. So I'm gonna put piano here, okay? Or some type of dance lessons or other musical lessons or you know guitar lessons or whatever so I have that there and then I think I also put it in when they are a senior I'll put that there so we have four years planned now again this is not in stone this is just a generalized plan the summer before you get to each one of these years you really go deep and you say okay do we still want to do this do we still want to have this and um, it just works wonders it really does that it keeps you organized it keeps you knowing what's coming and what to be prepared for and that you have all of your ducks in a row. You can do this. High school is not scary. It is not the scary monster that everybody says it is. It really isn't. Um, I will be dropping more videos about the different curriculum that I use for high school and anything else that I can think of that is very helpful for you. So that means you really have to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you know when those videos will drop. We will see you on another one. Toodles. You are going to rock it out of the park. You're going to knock it out of the park. I know it.